If you're not already subscribed to this YouTube channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button now, along with the bell icon so you can be notified whenever a new video is posted. And if you're already subscribed, check and make sure that YouTube hasn't unsubscribed you. And of course, be sure to give the video a like as well as share it on your social media. The white supremacist hate that. And now, the Sunday address. It's that time of year again. We're going into election season. In fact, a lot of elections are taking place just this year alone in a couple of weeks. So the junk mail has officially become garbage mail. The election flyers are already going out and they're trying to soften us up for the big test next year. And make no mistake, that's what it is. It's not going to be an election next year. It's going to be a national IQ test. And a lot of people are going to fail it. So all these political con men are talking, but what's on the menu? Nothing burgers. Everyone's trying to figure out how to get black votes without actually offering us anything. So they're using scare talk and fear mongering. And while it is true that the GOP is a fascistic cult bent on world domination, it's also true that Democrats aren't doing anything about it. When the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade, Democrats immediately began moving to initiate statewide referendums in red states, no less so that white so that women, who is who they were actually catering to, would be able to have access to abortion unfettered. And all it took was for Clarence Thomas to make one remark that the Supreme Court should revisit their ruling that legalized gay marriage, and both Republicans and Democrats immediately crossed the aisle and began passing a federal gay marriage law. So black people are being murdered with impunity, black people are being targeted for impoverishment by both business and government, working together, and what are the Democrats doing for us? Nothing. What are they promising? Less than nothing. Now, what do you give someone who wants something from you but offers nothing in return? Nothing. Stop me if you've heard this one before. You go to the mailbox and you got a handful of campaign flyers. Mostly some non-black politician or aspiring non-black politician campaigning in your area, which is majority black. They've sent out a bunch of flyers to your area and they brag about what they claim to have done or whatever their qualifications are. But they don't say anything about black people or about what black people are going to get. In fact, these people have never even met you, but they want you to vote for them. Why? Because they tell you who's endorsing them. And of course, predictably, it's nothing but black preachers and political prostitutes. You'll recall that this is what Michael Bloomberg did during his failed presidential run in 2020. See, people have no problem smiling in our faces. And then if we're silly enough to vote for them, they go into office and totally ignore us. They use the political offices that we gave them to help everyone else to leapfrog us. And there will be pork chop preachers, civil rights retreads, and sellout social activists who are going to help them do it. Our community has been politically colonized. This is what happens with most black politicians we deal with, and it happens with all the non-black ones, so ignoring the black vote is a bipartisan issue. Well, the way to deal with political colonization is the same way you would deal with any kind of colonization. You stage a revolution. You fight back by exercising discipline with our votes and a zero-tolerance policy for being ignored. Our ballot is leverage, but only if we use it that way. You extract promises from anyone who claims to want your vote before you go vote. See, black folks have been getting the game all backwards. When someone's campaigning, it's supposed to be about substance, not semantics. We vote for someone because they give a cute little speech, mostly talking around our interests. And even then, they don't dare promise us anything. And in most cases, they don't even say the word black. And we're so desperate to believe that they'll actually do something for us, that finally someone's going to produce something for us. We just go into delusion about it and convince ourselves of things that they didn't actually say. Four years ago, the black media warned you that Joe Biden wasn't going to do anything for us that he was just giving us lip service and weak lip service at that. We warned you literally on the hour by hour basis about how Simone Sanders was lying on CNN, falsely claiming that Biden's 94 crime bill had nothing to do with the mass incarceration orgy that followed, even though she knew that was a lie. And now we and now see that after 25 plus years of lies, lies, and more lies, the house of cards is starting to crumble. The Democrats are finding themselves paying a price, and they're in a panic because their usual tricks don't seem to be working. And they claim they don't have a clue why that is. The Democrats' lack of black support has become so dire that now you got them scared that they won't even have enough black delegates to be able to give Biden the nomination. That's what they're saying right now, that the number of delegates not even the voters, the delegates themselves are going to be so white that they won't even be able to get Biden the nomination. This is inside the Democratic Party itself.
This is how bad the situation has gotten because of their hemorrhaging black support. Donna Brazil said, I keep looking at these diversity goals in big states like New York, like California, and for some reason, whether it's the African American community, black community, the LGBTQ plus community, or Hispanic community, the numbers continue to decrease. Now, let's get one thing straight. Whenever these people talk about diversity or people of color vote, et cetera, they're talking about black people. They're using those as code words to get around having to say black is nothing but the black vote. They don't want to say that because they don't want us thinking that we've actually got the upper hand when we do. Hispanics break for the GOP, Asians more so. And when it comes to the LGBT community, there's simply not enough of them to make a difference in an election. So the Democrats mention everybody else, and especially the LGBT vote gets mentioned because a large number of the DNC's donors are LGBT themselves. But as a voting bloc, they don't decide elections. They simply don't have the numbers. So make no mistake, this is just her trying to get around saying yes, it's about the black vote and nothing else. Brazil went on to say, it raises a red flag in my judgment, and then I try to find out what the hell is it. Now, she used to be the head of the DNC, at least on paper anyway. But here she is saying Democrats' black support is continuing to fall, and she doesn't have a clue why that is. Gee, hasn't she been talking to the black community? Well, actually, yes, she has been talking to the black community, and that's the entire problem. She's been doing nothing but talking. She hasn't been listening. Because if she had actually been listening to the black community, she wouldn't be sitting here now having to pretend as if she doesn't know what the problem is. The black vote is the Democrat Party base. So how the hell can she not know why the base is crumbling? Because she's lying. She knows exactly what the problem is, but she doesn't dare say it. She can't afford to say it because it would threaten her white paymasters. So instead, she does what they always do. She plays dumb. And she's hoping that just enough silly Negroes out there will play dumb right along with her. By the way, Donna Brazil is from South Louisiana, just like James Carville, the Cajun Skeletor. She's one of the Dems' black bootlicks who tells whatever line of crap they want. She then comes to us and shucks and jives and tries to cajole us into doing what her paymasters want. If she's so smart, so knowledgeable, so astute, with a decades-long trend of black voters walking away, how come she doesn't have a clue what's causing it? Well, let me go ahead and give Donna a clue. Black voters have not gotten any tangibles from the Democrats in 50 plus years. We don't even get basic respect. Instead, we are subjected to the sexually suspect Jamal Bowman, who's always pulling some asinine PR stunt, always some attention-seeking stunt, yelling at Marjorie Taylor Greene or yelling at Kevin McCarthy or pulling the fire alarm. I mean, this clown will do anything to get somebody to notice him. But what he won't do is anything for black people. You also have Representative What's-Her-Name out of Texas who apparently buys hair weave in bulk. This woman has been campaigning heavy to get white media attention. From the moment Jasmine Crockett was campaigning for office, she made it a point to get in front of the cameras every chance she gets. And she'll do anything to make herself the center of attention. Just last week, while talking about the federal documents Trump had at Mar-a-Lago, she made sure to use vulgar language. That way the white media would feel compelled to have to shoehorn her into the news cycle, at least for one day. You know, Marjorie Greene did the same thing with those pictures of Hunter Biden that she put up in Congress. You have a white female Republican and a black female Democrat, and both of them use the same tactics to get white media attention. And neither one of them is willing to go to the mat for black people. Jasmine Crockett certainly isn't going to make a vulgar spectacle of herself for reparations, though she does want to make sure that people vote, though she's not promoting the idea that black people should actually get anything for our vote. She's not promoting black people's interests. She's just promoting herself. And she doesn't care about black people for the same reason that Eric Adams doesn't, or Karen Bass, or LaFonza Butler. The bootlick is a creature of pure self-interest. It does not bother them to be in districts where the number of black voters are in the single digits. See, they're not trying to get the black vote. They're trying to actually escape blackness through political means. These sellouts figured out decades ago that they could get enough white donor money and political support if they champion everyone's interests except ours. They're out for themselves alone. Like Stephen Reed down there in Alabama, they brag about it. Willie Brown made a career out of slick-talking white voters and white politicians into backing him. Jamal Bowman and Jasmine Crockett are operating out of the same playbook. All of them are. But their job their is to job use to just enough just weasel enough words that hopefully they can get you to con yourself into thinking that maybe, just maybe, they might do something for you.
Joe Biden, Joe certainly, Biden used certainly used that ploy. That ploy. He made black he made voters black plenty of promises in 2020. We forced the we forced wrinkled up wrinkled racists up to promise things promise. like a so-called White, White House, House Police, Police Accountability, Police Accountability Commission, Commission and a lift every and voice every plan, plan, which was no plan, plan at all, and a George and Floyd, Floyd policing bill. bill. They even had they one about one John, John I've spilled blood in Selma Lewis. And we gave Democrats control of the House, the Senate and the White House so they could do all of these things. And that way they had a majority so there would be no excuses for not doing it. But as soon as Biden got elected, what did he do? He gave us nothing but excuses. And the rest of the Democrats fell in line behind him saying the same thing. Just like Obama did back in 2008 when black voters handed him a filibuster-proof majority in the Senate. He had the ability to make it where the Republicans couldn't stop him from doing anything. We handed him that much power. He had the power to steamroll whatever legislation he wanted through. And he did. Except he didn't do anything for black people. Instead, it was a health care law that was mainly just a sop so he could say, well, I did something really big, so, so now you can say that I was a, I, I was a president of um, consequence. He squandered the political capital that we handed him. And he then turned around and made it a point to insult black voters, particularly black men, every chance he got. That was when the decade-long decline in black voter support began, during the Obama years. And of course, and Biden of course, has Biden been no has different. Been no different. He, lectures he lectures us about how we have to work, work with everyone, everyone else, but he never tells else anyone else that they got to work with us. He doesn't tell Hispanics they, Hispanics they have to learn to work with black people. He doesn't tell Asians, well, black folks got more votes than you, so you got to learn to work with them. He doesn't tell anybody else that. He doesn't tell the Jewish vote that they have to learn to work with black people. No, he only tells black people that we need to learn to work with everyone else. We have to learn to accommodate everyone else. But what about our needs? Well, we can't well, do we that. Can't it's politically that. disadvantageous. disadvantageous. You got to wait till the next election, election. Or, not or not at all. And now Democrats now are Democrats watching as watch Trump, Trump with 90 with plus indictments, indictments against him is neck and neck with and Biden, 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 whose approval numbers are cratering. Are cratering. This, is this is the cost is of, the lying, cost to of people. lying to people. That's what this, That's is. What this is. Sooner or later, Sooner the people later, get people tired of you lying to them. Well, some of them do anyway. Trump's been getting Trump's dogpiled been getting in the white, in the white media, media, certainly by these Democrat, Democrat prosecutors, but I warned everyone that beating up on him too much would have the opposite effect. The law of diminishing returns kicks in at some point. So Democrats realize that they're in trouble, and they want to pivot so that they can preserve themselves, but they want to do it in a way that doesn't require them to actually respond to black people's demands. All of these illegal immigrants we got in these blue cities, that's putting big pressure on Biden from all the angry voters. So much so that Biden's been forced to make some noises about doing some construction on that border wall. By the way, side note, most of the illegal aliens in the U.S. didn't come in illegally. They didn't slip in over the border. Most of them were let in legally, but they decided to overstay their visas. Just food for thought. Understand, Understand something. something. Unless, the Unless the politician is saying that they're going to start they're prosecuting, start prosecuting these, employers these employers for hiring illegal, hiring illegal aliens, aliens or prosecuting, prosecuting landlords for renting, renting places, places to them, to them then they're not, then serious. They're not serious. These illegal aliens, illegal aliens are not aliens simply are not coming here, here for no here reason. For it's because, because all, all of them have been hearing and seeing from their own family members and friends that if they came to the United States, there would be jobs from some unscrupulous employer. They would have no problem getting themselves someplace to rent. There's an entire apparatus and infrastructure and networks that up for them. See, these illegal aliens are not suspended in midair. They have an entire apparatus in place. Biden's not talking about what he's going to do to dismantle it. He's seen that some Democrat politicians are catching hell because of the influx of illegals in Chicago and New York, and now Biden's feeling the heat. See, there was no problem with immigrants coming in because as far as they were concerned, this would eventually dilute the black vote. The power of the black vote would be reduced with a new non-black voting bloc, one that wouldn't cause the Democrats the kind of troubles that black voters have caused. But the problem now is the numbers are coming in too fast. The immigrants are coming in way too fast, so fast that it's causing a backlash. And that's something the Democrats weren't counting on. The answer here would be to enforce the law, and that means mass deportation and prosecution of these employers and landlords who are breaking the law. And by the way, mass deportation would include building massive incarceration facilities on the border. And before anyone tries to claim that America can't, this country has trillions of dollars in the government's federal coffers. It would be child's play for them to build prisons. God knows they were doing it during the 90s to go after us. That would be the way to put a halt to it. But if you think Biden's going to be doing that, you're crazy. And Trump he had four years to and didn't even lift a finger about it. 
And that's because that's both because political both parties have their own reasons. Own Democrats reasons. are looking to get some new voters, and Republicans are catering to these unscrupulous business interests who want cheap labor. In the case of the banks, they make money off of remittances. That is money that illegal aliens send back to their families in their home countries. Everyone's getting paid off of this. At least the people who matter are getting paid off of it. So both parties will make a couple of good sounding noises, the Republicans more than the Democrats, on this issue, but neither one's going to do any anything about it, at least not in the current political climate. But speaking of other constituencies, you've probably heard of some guy named Anthony Oliver. He had apparently become an overnight success because of a song that he wrote about the rich. Basically, this guy is being used as a springboard to push the political line about appealing to hardworking white people, as Hillary Clinton put it, or the forgotten man, as Trump termed it. White media has been acting as if this guy is the spokesman for a generation when in reality they're just using his one-hit wonder to push the same line they push every election cycle about catering to the white vote. That's what he represents, at least the way that they're presenting him. Now, I listened to this guy's song to see if he spoke to any deep truths, and predictably after he gave his grievances about his low pay and rotten life, he did some griping about people living off the government. Kind of reminded me of Clive and Bundy. And by the way, don't be at all surprised if it turns out that this guy gets exposed as just another alt-right retread. You've been warned. He should have sung a couple of bars about corporations getting subsidies if he wants to talk about people living off the government dole. But he doesn't seem bright enough to understand that concept, and I'm pretty sure the folks that he's warbling for wouldn't understand it either. Call me jaded, but if his song is about rich men in Richmond, why does he detour into talking about poor slackers? It just seems a little bit odd. I don't like people who try to live their lives off the public dole either, but what I'm saying is that if you look at how much money goes to the welfare cheats and then compare it to the untold billions the corporations get simply for being a vital national industry or because their CEO plays golf with this or that senator or president, there's no comparison. His song only makes sense for about the first couple of stanzas, then it kind of falls apart. But there's also another thing about Mr. Anthony's self-pitying ballad that makes me roll my eyes. He is classified as white in a country founded by white men and was created for the express benefit of those classified as white. Now, as someone who has been the primary and majority beneficiary of every policy and act this country has ever done and that its corporations have carried out, how can he be sitting here now complaining? If you're classified as white in the United States and you're not set and you're not living it up, then that's not the fault of the rich men in Richmond or anywhere else. In fact, it's not even the fault of the welfare cheats either, odious though they may be. A country that hands everything to someone on a silver platter merely on the basis of race cannot be blamed when later on that person has empty hands. When you live in a country like this set up specifically for your benefit based on race, you don't get to turn around later and claim to have a grievance. Mr. Oliver should look at some of the life choices that he's made. Ask himself Ask if maybe himself generation, generation after generation, generation of people who have been the beneficiaries of white privilege, of white privilege has perhaps has atrophied, atrophied their, their ability, ability to compete. To compete. Maybe he can write a song about that. Speaking about competition, that's what the black votes on. Our vote has to be competed for. And whomever comes to us better come with tangibles and respect. No lip service. We better show that we have a long memory, too. When people lie to us, when they disrespect us, we better show them that we won't forget it. And we won't tolerate it either. Because when you let people get away with abusing you, or worse, when you reward them for their abuse, this is what you get. There are a lot of cool men out here. I love let's, the president. Let's give it up for the brothers. There's a lot of cool men out here. For the, for the men out here. I love the president's speech saying you're looking at a feminist. What can men do leaving here? Be better. <laughs> Be better, Be better at everything. At everything. <laughs> Be Better fathers. fathers. Good, good Lord, Lord, just being, just being good fathers good who fathers love who your daughters, daughters and, are and are providing a solid, a solid example of what it means to be a good man in the world, world showing, showing them what it feels like to be, like loved. to be loved. That is the that greatest, is the greatest gift, gift that the men in my, men life, in my life 
gave to me, and we've talked about this. Yes. The fact that I've never experienced abuse at the hands of any man in my life, and that's sad to say that that's a rare reality. So men can be better at that. Men can be better husbands, you know, which is be a part of your family's life. Do the dishes, you know. Don't babysit, don't babysit your children. Your children. You, don't you don't babysit your babysit own children. children. You know, be so engaged. Be engaged. You, know, you know, don't just don't think just going think to work and coming home, home makes you a man. Being a, being a father, being engaged, engaged, engaged all that stuff all is that important. Stuff important. Be a better be a employer. Better employer. employer. You, know, you know, when you are when sitting, you are at, a sitting at a seat of power at a table of any kind, and you look around and you just see you, it's just it's you just and a you bunch of and men, a bunch of men around, a around a table on a golf on a course, course making, making deals, deals. And, you and you allow that, that, to, happen, that, allow that, that to happen and you're okay, and you're okay with, with that, that. Be, better. Be, better. Be, better. be better be better be better be better i love that just be better just be better <laughs> i could go I could on go but, on, I'm but i'm not you you get you, the point fellas right fellas what are you going to be? There you go. There you go. Michelle Obama, Michelle Obama the damned, damned nerve, nerve of that heifer. heifer. She makes it a point, she makes to, reiterate a point to reiterate and push reiterate racist, racist lies, lies that black men that don't men stay don't with their kids. And kids. black men, of course, are predators, predators preying on little girls, girls, girls and all the rest of it. First of all, this is a contradiction, contradiction especially coming especially from her. From her. You cannot you say cannot that say black men black don't men stay with their families, their families and, and simultaneously, simultaneously are abusing and mistreating the females and the girls in these families, too. too. He, cannot he cannot simultaneously, simultaneously be absent, absent and, and be there at the exact same time. Same time. But of course, this but wasn't course, about this truth. Wasn't about it truth. was about pushing about a racist, racist narrative. And she conveniently, and she conveniently forgets that she's married to a half-black man, yet she attacks black men without a pang of remorse, while the shrew Oprah Winfrey next to her cackles like the witch she is. This is what this happens is what when you happens tolerate, tolerate and reward and abuse. abuse. Barack Obama, Barack Obama had only Obama dated and slept with white women his white entire, entire life. Michelle, Michelle is the first and only black woman that he's ever been involved, been involved with. with. And does Barack, and does Barack Obama, Obama mind his Obama wife speaking, speaking about black men in this way? Of course not, because he was doing it years before she did. He doesn't consider himself, he doesn't consider himself to be black. black, he considers himself to be something else. And he considers her to be an accessory. When Barack Obama decided that he was going to go into public life, he also decided that he needed a wife, because no no unmarried, no unmarried man has been, man has been elected president, president in the United States, States, States since the 1800s. 1800s. Barack Obama Barack needed a Obama wife to complete, to complete the, look. the look, but it had to be a it black be one a because black white because voters white wouldn't white like him with a white, white woman on his arm. On his arm. Michelle, Michelle saw, saw that he was clearly plugged into the DNC machine, machine too. Machine obviously, too. obviously, Democrats, Democrats like Tom like Daschle, Daschle saw this saw young, up-and-coming up biracial, biracial as a useful as a tool. tool. And she understood, she that, understood that as long as she stuck with him, she'd get a nice little elevator ride to the top too, which she did. See, these people don't have marriages. They have arrangements. And Michelle certainly Michelle got her certainly equity, got out, of equity out, of out of the game, making millions from the white, from the white media. media. Oh, this little oh, investment this paid off handsomely for her, didn't. For her didn't. Now, this video now, this was from video 2016, 2016, and I don't think it's, don't at, think all it's at all a coincidence that it happened a few happened months before months Trump, won Trump won the presidency. Won the presidency. Not, to Not to say that this, this video alone video was solely was responsible for Hillary losing, losing the election, the election but it was definitely but part of a steady part of a drumbeat drum of disrespect for the black vote, black vote in this case for black men, that was part of what made black voters say, you know what, forget it. We're sick and tired of being sick and tired of Michelle and Barack Obama. And then you and finally then had you Obama finally begrudgingly, begrudgingly admit after Hillary after lost that maybe his maybe big his mouth big wrote mouth some checks that his behind couldn't cash. cash. Oh, he tried oh, to he explain tried that the president, people don't understand, don't understand, just don't have all that much power. Yeah, black, yeah, voters, black just voters just wanted just too much. much. See, that's the, See problem. that's the problem. Black voters black should have voters lowered their expectations. Their expectations. See, the See, Obamas the are entitled. You had Barack Obama, Obama running around Obama telling black voters, voters that we have to secure his legacy. Apparently, we were obligated to. He insults black people, specifically black men as a group. He does nothing about the countless black people being murdered and harmed nationwide. He tells us what he's not going to do for us, brings us zero tangibles. He makes sure to cater to everybody else and throws it in our faces. And then he has the nerve to order us to vote the way that he tells us to. As he saw it, black people were silly enough to vote for him in 2008 without demanding anything for our vote. And then we did it again in 2012. As far as he was concerned, we were willing fools. We were just there for him to take advantage of us. And a lot of us went for the okie doke 
And then you had Biden say that if we couldn't decide whether or not to vote for him, then we ain't black. And Kamala Harris saying she wasn't going to do anything that only benefits black people, all the while both of them tripping over their shoelaces to do things that would only benefit other non-black groups. More black people are starting to understand that this is an abusive relationship that we've been in, and it was time to walk away a long time ago. We need to make it a point to remember the insults, remember the broken promises, remember the lies. When the DNC and the RNC trolls call themselves coming into our spaces and saying, well, the Republicans are a bunch of racists and fascists, or those Democrats haven't done anything for you, vote Republican. You make sure to tell them that neither party has done anything for us, and it's going to take a lot more than them simply disparaging their opponents to get our vote. You got to put tangibles on the table. And when they lie and claim that they already have, let them know we're not fooled. Black people black put people Biden in the White House out of fear and nothing else. Nothing else. Trump scared Trump a lot of black, black people. people. And while he's while definitely he's not our friend, friend, neither is Biden. Biden. We have to we stop have to letting our votes be the result of anything vote. other than a cold a clinical cold decision, decision on what we're going to get. Gonna get. It's, impossible it's impossible to stand, to stand on, on principle, principle when you're quaking with quaking fear. With fear. This time around, this time we're, around being we're being that told that democracy hangs in the hangs balance. In the That's balance. a crock. What they really mean is that white comfort hangs in the balance. Black people have never had democracy in this country for a single moment, and neither political party is promising to move us one inch closer to it. I see them worried about what the possible ramifications would be if Trump gets back in power, but just as Trump's presidency didn't change our position, his getting back in the White House won't either. The only difference between Trump and Biden is that one of them is a little bit too arrogant or stupid to hide his anti-black racism behind empty rhetoric. I would prefer an honest enemy to a false friend. At least then people have to admit to the reality of the situation they're in. But the truth is, we don't need friends. We have something far better than friends. We have family. Ultimately, the goal of black empowerment must be for us to have our hands on the levers of power. I say this because we can't play the game of trying to bend these races to our will forever. Yes, we must show our resolve and make the system do things it wasn't designed to do, but that's a short-term goal. Justice is far too important for us to leave it up to chance. The long game has always been to have the power in our hands. At some point, we will have to cultivate, field, and install candidates in office that we chose and who operate in our interests. If you think the phony scaremongering is bad now, just wait and see how they react when we have enough power to push the Jamal Bowmans and the Jasmine Crockett's aside. We're through letting the white media tell us who our leaders are. But if you want to silence the enemy, you'll have to start running their puppets out of the paint. That will come back to how much we invest in ourselves. If we stop letting our enemies make us afraid of what they say is going to happen if we don't obey them, if we return to trusting each other and looking to each other and looking out for one another, then we will finally regain the confidence to reject the political colonizers and the internal force necessary to stand up to the bootlicks and the sellouts and to boldly seize the future that we deserve. Good evening and be one. I'd like to take a moment to mention some of our contributors. Black Voltron Reloaded, William Graves, Chris Pruitt, Edward Redd, and Sakina Collins. Salute to them and thank you to everyone for listening, liking, and sharing this message. Black Empowerment only exists because of you.